No one leaves. Sir, are you all right? Call the police! There are no outward signs of distress. Could a punch have killed him? That is possible. See some redness and swelling on the neck. A strong punch could have injured the brainstem, resulting in some sort of cerebral incident. Mm. Did you see how the fight got started? Uh, they were dancing, and then they were fighting. I saw. He hit the dead fella hard in the head. It snowballed from there. You saw who hit this man? He ran out the back door. Did you get a good look at him? I did. About 40? He had been hit a few times. Were you involved in the altercation yourself? No, 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 no. I was just here to write a review on this establishment for a new newspaper devoted to entertainment. A newspaper about entertainment? Best of luck with that now. Let me buy you a drink. Oh, yes, please. What have you there, sir? It's a letter addressed to a Mr. McCormick, 17 Fur Street. Thank you for speaking with me and for all of the help you've given me. I shall never forget it. Yours truly, Danielle. Uh, George, please go to this address and find out what you can about this Mr. McCormick. Sir. You too, with me. Hmm. He can't have gone far. Take a look down there, Tucker. Sir. Over here. Look at this badge, sir. This man's a police officer. Good Lord. All right, get him down to the station house so he can dry out. Tucker! Detective Richard Tauber. A witness saw someone who looks like you involved in an altercation with a man at the Starbright Club. More than looks like me. I'm not proud of it, but I'm not on duty. Did you know the victim, McCormick? Victim? What do you mean exactly? He's dead. Oh, Lord. He was just a stranger at the bar. And what happened? He was drunk. He took a swing at me, and I swung back. Hard enough to kill him? That was not my intention, I swear. I assume you know how this works. You give me your official statement. I want to speak to the chief constable. I beg your pardon? I won't say any more. Chief Constable Stewart is the only one I'll talk to. Did you really have to drag Chief Constable Stewart into this, Murdoch? This Detective Tauber refused to cooperate any further. Well, there must be something going on that we don't know about, then. <sighs> Sir, I apologize for bringing you in here at night. Oh, no, not at all. Sir, what did Detective Tauber wish to speak with you about? Ah, he asked for leniency. It was just a drunken accident with a bar patron. Hmm. Were you familiar with him? Well, when he sobered up, you do your due diligence in taking a statement and completing the investigation uh, into this incident. Oh, and the riffraff might give him a hard time, him being a policeman. We'll put him in a solitary cell, sir. Good. Well, I, I say good night now. Oh, Tom, do not forget tomorrow's luncheon. I mean, you've already met Melvin Banks, but the rest of the board, they hold great sway, including Chadwick Vaughan. And I want them all to meet the top contender for my job. Thank you, sir. I'll see you then. Did you hear that, Murdoch? Mm. Top contender. The kid from Yorkshire might have a chance at the big chair. <laughs> Here, I think she's almost done. Thank you, Claudette. Yeah. I'm off. Yeah. I will see you at lunch. Oh, Miriam, I forgot. I, I can't meet you for lunch. No? No, I'm attending the city council luncheon. It's being held at the private residence of a controller. 
I believe Inspector Brackenreed is attending that as well. I didn't realize you'd received an invitation. Yes, well, I just managed to secure one last minute. Hmm. I had to ask some of my old colleagues from the university, but I got on the guest list. I imagine you will be soliciting donations? Yes. I'm hoping to purchase an electrocardiograph machine for the hospital. Incredible. Well, with your powers of persuasion, I have no doubt you will succeed. Ooh, wow. Mm. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Only $18 this month? Are you sure there hasn't been some sort of mistake? Oh, for the love of Pete. George. Sir. Any findings at McCormick's place last night? Uh, yes, sir. I found an address book. And inside, I found the name Richard Tauber. The man residing in our cells at the moment. Sir. And by the yellowing of the pages, I assume they've known each other some time. He told me McCormick was just a stranger in a bar. Did he? Detective Tauber. Right. Detective Richard Tauber. Still three sheets for Pete's sake. Oi! Tauber! Wake up! Oh. oh, good lord. Sir, he's cut his wrists. It looks as though the killer has killed himself. A suicide in our cells. This is a disgrace for the whole station house. What happened, Higgins? Uh, I don't know, sir. I patted him down myself when we brought him in. Not much of a job. He brought in a bloody razor. And now he's dead in our cells. Hardly the news I want to bring to a luncheon with the chief constable. Get to the bottom of this, Murdoch. Who was on watch last night? Uh, Harris and McNabb were on the schedule. I'd like to have a word with both of them. Yes, sir. And you two, go to Tauber's home and see if you can find anything that would shed some light on his relationship with McCormick. Sir. Sir, um, I was here for my entire scheduled shift, I swear. Did you check the cells? Yes, I did. Were you engaged in any activity that may have diverted your attention? We, we did play rummy to pass the time. Oh? Care to elaborate? McNabb was on round. I was manning the telephones. Tucker happened to be here too, so we played a, a couple of games. Happened to be here too? I had a shift last night, so I showed up. Turns out I read the schedule wrong. Constable Harris stated that you did not then go home. You played card games. Bit of trouble at home, sir. Thought I'd have more luck with cards. Did you observe anything else out of the ordinary? No. And the lockbox was secure? The lockbox? The lockbox that we keep the cell keys inside of. You, you do put the cell keys inside the lockbox between rounds, correct? Yes, of course. Except when we leave the key on the hook near the cells like we used to. You mean to tell me that constables at station house number four have been cutting corners every shift? Petitia. The pinpoint hemorrhages on the lungs lead me to believe this man died of asphyxiation, not a loss of blood. I also found these deep scratches around the neck. As though he were attempting to fight off something that was holding him about the neck. Mm. Any blood under his fingernails? That's what I wanted to mention next. Right. This man did not kill himself. He was strangled and then his wrists were cut after the fact to stage a suicide. How? He was in a cell. That's what I intend to find out. I'll need to comb through his personal effects for finger marks. Of course. Thank you. I'm sure he'll be alone in a minute. Did you see the results from the Argonauts game last night? Uh, no good. Stuart, you should have that referee arrested. It's a travesty. Oh, Thomas, just the man I'm looking for. Come on. Well, I want you to make some of the controllers. Gentlemen, 
This is Inspector Thomas Brackenreid, Station House 4. This is Mason Jeffries. Ah. And our host, Chad Wright Vaughan. Ah. Welcome, Inspector. Thank you very much for having me. You have a splendid home. I see Chief Constable Stewart has endorsed you as his successor, Inspector. Francis runs a well-oiled machine. Good enough for him, good enough for me. Can the board count on having continued cooperation from the police if, when you fill the role? Mr. Vaughan, you have my utmost assurance. Good. It's heartening to see the police doing such noble work. Inspector Brackenreid. Oh, Dr. Ogden, Murdoch told me you'd be here. Drink? Oh, yes, please. Uh, gentlemen, this is Dr. Julia Ogden of the New Women's College Hospital. She's also the wife of my best detective, William Murdoch. New Women's Hospital. How interesting. Yes, we've had great success so far, thanks to our generous donors. We've treated over 100 patients already, many of them wives and mothers. Well, I may have to make a donation myself, Dr. Ogden. A man was strangled in our cells last night. This is a grave matter that severely compromises our integrity as police officers. What's more, an unknown finger mark was found on the top button of the victim's shirt, which leads me to suspect one thing. Someone who did not belong here was let into our cells. Also, no one checked in on Richard Tauber all night until he was found dead in the morning? Someone led a murderer into station house number four. Thus, I will be implementing a new policy. From this day forward, I am doubling the number of constables on overnight shifts. And I know what you're probably asking yourselves, so let me tell you. No. You will not be getting any days off. And no, you will not be receiving overtime pay. At this point in the investigation, covering for one another is no longer an option. If you choose to do so, you will be considered an accessory to murder. George Henry, my office. Well, that's good news. If he was murdered, then it can't be my fault. So, what have we learned? Uh, sir, apparently uh, both McCormick and Tauber work at Station House three years ago. They were partners, in fact. So, they had known each other a long time. Right. Uh, you two go to Station House 3 and find out all you can. And you, sir? I have a luncheon to attend. Chief Constable Stewart. Detective, I didn't think I'd see you here. Well, if you're looking for your wife, I think she left some time ago. I, I was hoping to speak with you. Uh, well, Tom mentioned that the man you locked up last night, he ended his own life. And a guilty conscience is bound to reveal itself. Actually, sir, the coroner has determined that Detective Tauber was strangled. It was a staged suicide. That's terrible news. Mm -hmm. Sir, when you spoke with him, did he mention any enemies or...? Not so. We've also learned that the victim was a former police constable himself. A Dean McCormick. He and Tauber were partners decades ago. Good morning. Did you know McCormick? Is that why you're here? You think I'm withholding information from you? No, I, I, I wasn't. If I don't think to add, I would have, I would have passed it along like any police officer. Yes, sir. I apologize to Detective Murdoch. He's a very thorough investigator. Sometimes, too thorough. I didn't think you'd be back before us. How was the luncheon? I didn't eat. Were you able to find out anything? Not much, sir. Just that McCormick partnered with Tauber for some time and then quit the force. Did the inspector know anything about McCormick? 
Just that he left the force shortly after Tauber and he worked a burglary case. Oh, well, we need details on that case then. Did you get the file? We did, sir. He said he would look into it, but it will take a while. Did you find out anything about this case? Well, he said it had to do with the burglary of a jewelry store, someplace on Queen Street. He couldn't remember the name exactly, but said it had been around forever. You two, out. That luncheon was my chance to impress some very important people. Sir, Chief Constable Stewart was the last person to speak with Richard Tauber. And he was very forthright with you, so leave him alone. I find it puzzling that Chief Constable Stewart would drop everything and come down to our station house to speak to a man he purports not to know. And then hours later, that man is found dead. What's that? We found a finger mark on one of Tauber's buttons. I've compared it to your finger marks, George's, Henry's, and everyone else he may have come in contact with. And now I've compared it to Chief Constable Stewart. You seriously suspect Chief Constable Stewart of being a murderer? It's standard procedure, sir. And don't worry, it's not a match. You need to look for someone who had a real motive to kill Torba. Hey! Eh? Clear off, Higgins. Sir? I think I just might know the jewelry store we're looking for. How would you know that, Henry? Well, I called Ruth, sir. She knows every jewelry store in town. We understand your shop was robbed about 20 years ago? That is correct, sir. Almost to the day. And what were the circumstances of that? The thief uh, entered from the roof through the skylight. I was examining some gemstones that night, and I'd fallen asleep in the back room. I saw him take a handful of necklaces and run out the store. You're lucky you weren't hurt. Yes, I thank God for that. But it is sad that the thief killed the young woman next door. I'm sorry. I thought it was just a simple robbery. Oh, uh, when the thief broke in, he took the skylight off the hinges and rested it on the chimney that connects to the apartment next door. That clogged the chimney overnight. So they died from inhaling smoke? Did they at least catch the culprit? Well, they arrested someone, but it wasn't the man I saw. Are you certain? <laughs> I saw the picture of the man they arrested, and it definitely wasn't the burglar. So an innocent man went to jail? No, he never made it that far. I heard they killed him. Uh -huh. Would you be willing to come down to the station house to give us a detailed description of the man you saw? Oh, it was a long time ago. Hmm. We could try. But let me just tell my wife. Sir, it sounds like Tauber and McCormick arrested the wrong man. Not to mention, killed him. What a horrific mistake. Unless it wasn't a mistake. But sir, why would they want to kill him? That appears to be the question. No, no, a thinner face, like a weasel. That's odd. Or a ferret. Mr. Wetzman's statement isn't included here. Well, I certainly gave one, signed it, and everything. Oh, I, I believe you. Yeah. In fact, this whole file's a bit thin. That's worrisome. I think Mr. Wetzman is right. They went after the wrong man. The suspect they arrested was a Wayne Baker, 45 years of age, weighed nearly 300 pounds. Well, the man I saw was young and, and nimble, like a fox. But, uh, yeah, yes, like, like that. Like that. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wetzman. Mm. Sir, according to this, Baker was a known criminal but a petty thief. Yes, and apparently targeted unguarded warehouses. Exactly. This jewelry breaking doesn't sound like him at all. And he was killed resisting arrest, so no one ever looked into it any further. Glad to hear you're not still going on about a certain chief constable. No, sir, but we do... Stuart's a good man. Paid his dues for years as inspector at Station House 3. And now, finally, there's someone higher up in charge willing to pull me up the ladder. Uh, just a moment, sir. Did you say Station House 3? I did. Sir, was Chief Constable Stewart the inspector at Station House 3 20 years ago? 
He was? What about it? Well, sir, he claims not to know Detective Tauber. 20 years ago, Tauber and McCormick were constables at Station House 3. He would have been their direct supervisor. That was 20 years ago. Maybe he forgot. Perhaps that's true, but he just spoke with him in our interview room. Surely he remembers him now. Why lie about that? Sir, we're looking into an old case of theirs. They killed a man, a suspect by the name of Wayne Baker, who we believe now was innocent. Sir, we may be looking at a cover-up here. And if that's the case, Chief Constable Stewart might be involved. Well, it sounds to me like it could be revenge. McCormack had no family. So Torba's killer may be someone who's connected to this Wayne Baker, if he is innocent, as you say. But, but sir, sir, enough about the Chief. That's a dead end. I'll see you both tomorrow morning. Sir, to say... No! I want this investigation focused on anyone who might want to avenge this Baker. Anyone? An officer was murdered on our watch. It's not time to be messing around. Detective Murdoch? Uh, sir, I finally tracked down an obituary for Wayne Baker. He was survived by a daughter, Danielle. Danielle? Isn't that the name on the letter we found on Mr. McCormick? It is. Very good, George. Are you still at the station house? I am. Right. Uh, head on home, and we'll follow up in the morning. Well, actually, sir, there are fewer bakers in the directory than you might think. Oh? I already have a street address for Miss Baker. 46 Agnes. I'll meet you there. Good lord. I'm not sure this is the address. Sir, I'm sure. Is there anyone in there? <laughs> Miss, are you all right? Are you Danielle Baker? Hey, Miss! Stop! Miss, please! Out of my way! There's no one in there. I think I saw Danielle Baker. Where is she? Let's just say she's remarkably fleet of foot. <laughs> we found this stuffed into her chimney. The smoke backed up, filled the whole room. This is oddly similar to the tragedy next door to Wetzman's jewelry store 20 years ago. A signal, perhaps, sir? This attack was to avenge those killings? Uh, it's possible. Or... Perhaps all those years ago wasn't an accident after all. So you think the whole jewelry store theft was... an elaborate cover-up of deliberate killings? We have to at least consider it, George. What if the perpetrator wanted the constabulary focused on the jewelry store robbery and didn't want anyone looking too closely at the identity of the two victims next door. But if that's the case, why go after the daughter? Why go after the daughter of the man you blamed for the theft? Because she knows the truth behind what actually happened. Then she knows two coppers killed her father. I took the liberty of touring the Women's College Hospital, Dr. Ogden. I must say I'm impressed. Thank you. You cause quite the stir. <laughs> so impressed, in fact, I'm arranging for my accountant to write you a check before the week is out. That's very kind of you, Mr. Vaughn. It isn't kindness, Doctor. I adore my dear wife, and I like to lead the way when it comes to supporting women's health. I admire your forward thinking. And I'd love to have you and your police detective husband over to dinner sometime. Oh. Such a learned couple must have very lively conversations. <laughs> And I have an excellent cellar full of fine wines. Oh, that sounds lovely. Although, the detective doesn't drink. Oh, I see. But I do. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> Cheers. Miss Hart, thank you for coming in. What can I do for you, detective? I'm looking for information on two young ladies who died on December 2nd, 1891. I'll see what I can track down. Have you had any luck finding out who killed Detective Tauber? No. Yes, what is it? I was hoping I might have a word. Hopefully you find out soon, Detective, before I meet any more of your prisoners at the morgue. Thank you, Miss Hart. Come in, Constable. 
I'm sorry for not coming forward earlier, but it's about the night that Dauber died. Go on. When I arrived at the station house, Constable McNabb was outside having a cigarette. You said he was doing his rounds. I didn't want to get him in trouble, but he had the door propped open while he was smoking. I noticed it ajar on my way to the lavatory later. Why didn't you close it? I did. But it had already been open for quite a while at that point. I see. Constable McNabb has a new baby at home. He's under a lot of strain. Hope that you'll consider being lenient, sir. Send your colleague into me, and then I would like you to file away all outstanding paperwork in the bullpen, please. What's going to happen to Constable McNabb? That is none of your concern, Constable Tucker. Would you really leave, sir? If Murdoch doesn't muck it up. Well, you'd be missed. Thank you very much, Crabtree. What's that all about? I'm guessing that Murdoch just found out who left the cell door open. Bloody McNabb. Right then, I'll say cheerio. I'm off to see the chief. Then I have a meeting with the board. They're voting on the next chief constable by the end of the week. Wish me luck, Buglugs. Best of luck, sir. No. No, I need you. Take care of this. Oh, good fella. John, huh? Nice and uh, early. So uh, it goes without saying that with my support, this interview is a mere formality. Just pleased to be considered, sir. We'll see if the board is assembled. You make sure you have that report in by the end of the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell them we're on our way. The committee's ready to finally see you. Well, I'm ready to. It'll be different around here if the inspector gets his promotion. Hmm. Detective Murdoch? Yes. Stay on him, McNabb. We'll come to you. McNabb? So I thought you'd suspended him. It was a ruse. When Tucker told me that McNabb, who never smells of tobacco, left the back door open because he'd gone out there to smoke, I knew he was lying. So I got McNabb to tail Tucker, and he's just seen Tucker meet with the chief constable. Should we tell the inspector? No. McNabb? Has Tucker gone inside? Yes. He came straight here for meeting with the chief constable. He just went in. All right. Man all the X's. What's Tucker playing at, sir? Miss Baker. Drop the weapon. Why would he want to kill you? That is a very serious accusation, Miss Baker. Answer me. What are you doing here? Chief Constable Stewart asked for my help to get Miss Baker out of town safely. I wasn't trying to harm her. He's lying. He came at me. I swear he's lying. Whatever happened, you shot a police constable. You're coming down to the station house with us. Get yourself to the infirmary and get checked out. Ever since Mr. McCormick told me the truth, people have been dying. Truth about what? He told me he and his partner, Richard Tauber, caught a jewelry thief 20 years ago. It was a terrible crime. The thief had caused the deaths of two women next door. Who was the thief? Mr. McCormick didn't know. They were ordered to let him go. They went after my father instead. And when he tried to run, Hopper killed him. Miss Baker, is it at all possible that you misinterpreted Constable Tucker's actions? No. 
What were you doing at Shucker's Bordello in the first place? A friend works there. She was letting me hide out. So you were in hiding? You feared for your life? You had already been pursued by one policeman, Constable Crabtree. That could color your perception. I was six years old when I saw a police officer beat my father to death as he tried to run away. That's understandable that anybody would be bound to fear the police after something like that. I didn't, though. But I know what a man's face looks like when he's going in for the kill, and I saw it again tonight. Why had you gotten in touch with McCormick in the first place? He'd been sending me small gifts of money for years. And now that I'm to be wed to a nice gentleman from Montreal, I wanted to thank him and find out why. I always assumed my father was guilty and that he'd caused the deaths of those poor women. McCormick told you otherwise. Yes. It weighed on him for years. And he'd always feared his partner killed my father on purpose. That's why he left the constabulary. Ah, uh, Miss Hart, I, I take it you found something. Uh, I did indeed. What's all this about two women who died from a block chimney? Uh, they died of smoke inhalation next door to the Wetzman Jewelers back in 1891. Well, we now believe they may have been deliberately killed by whoever broke into the jewelry store that night. And Miss Hart has managed to track down their identities? Uh, yes, two sisters, Elsie and Nora Haynes, age 20 and 22. Very good, thank you. Put the kettle on, Crabtree. So, is Chief Constable Stewart involved in this or not? Well, sir, at the very least, I believe he was involved in covering up what happened 20 years ago. And what about everything that's going on now? I don't know, but these events are connected. I've asked our artist to take Mr. Wetzman's witness description and to age it up 20 years. It doesn't look like Chief Constable Stewart. Don't do anything. Why? Do you know him, sir? Excellent. It's a pleasure playing against a decent opponent. I suspect most of my servants let me win. Another game? I prefer to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> Always wise. Now, tell me, Inspector. You didn't come here to play snooker. To what do I owe the honor of this visit? Well, Mr. Vaughan, I've learnt some disturbing facts of late. About what? Well, this all happened a very long time ago. Do the names Elsie and Nora Haynes ring a bell? I have no idea what you're talking about, Inspector. You were already married in 1891, were you not? What was it? A little fling that got tired of being on the side? Those two sisters always thought too much of themselves. Nora and I were just having fun. But Elsie kept filling her head full of drivel, egging her on to tell my wife. So nothing about their deaths was an accident. And the burglary was a distraction. You're up for Chief Constable, Inspector. You know I'm on the board. I can put an end to your promotion. Now, the real question is what else are you prepared to pay for my silence, along with the job? The position could be just the beginning. Influence, entry to exclusive circles, is that how you helped Stuart? Yes. Francis helped me once, so I helped him in turn. And you both helped each other out with Richard Torba. The chief constable arranged for you to visit the cells. You already know a great deal, don't you, Inspector? Francis made arrangements for me to slip in the back door. He thought Talbot could be silent with the bribe. But you didn't. This kind always comes back for more. Talbot knew I was the young man they'd let go. He had me over a barrel, so I did what needed to be done. 
And I'm delighted to have had this conversation. And it's been recorded for posterity. I've obtained Vaughn's finger marks, and they are a match for the mark we found on Tauber's button. But Chief Constable Stewart's not exactly in the clear on this one. No. Twice he made concessions to Vaughn, and twice people have ended up dead. And he tampered with evidence. I saw the original eyewitness statements in his office. You know, Murdoch, we've both had occasion to skirt the law. Yes, sir. None of us is without fault or flaw. If I report on Chief Constable, I won't be getting that promotion. He was the only one pulling for me. I understand. I'll leave that up to you, sir. Tucker. Sir. Constable Tucker. I know you let a killer into our station house. I let a man in. I didn't know he was a killer. On whose orders? Chief Constable Stewart. Now a man is dead because of your actions. What do you think the sanctions should be for this? None. It was a direct order from the chief. He told me to keep it quiet. I was just following the chain of command. I'll be watching you, Tucker. And believe me, you so much as step a toe out of line. Excellent work. Station us for. I'm grateful that Chadwick Bond is finally going to jail. Long overdue, I'd say. I'd always thought of you as a man of principles, Chief Constable. I do my best. But you let Vaughn off the hook 20 years ago. Oh, it's the boy. He's a good family. I knew the father. They told me that the burglary was, uh, was a useful lark, some sort of uh, dare gone down. terribly wrong. And what of the murders next door? I believe them to be an accident. If I'd known it was murder... What about your own constables? How did they come to kill an innocent man? I like to close cases. And they may have felt pressure to pin the blame on someone. And then they bungled the arrest and they killed poor Baker. On your orders? Of course not! The Tober. Oh, he was always a physical man. You seem to accept a lot of misdeeds as mere accidents. I try to believe the best of people. What's wrong with that? You ought to have been setting a better example to your own constables. You look to your own station house, Sonny Jim. It's not exactly the tightest ship, is it? <sighs> When Chandwick started asking after Baker's family, I worried for the daughter, so I took her, get her to safety. You dragged one of my own men into your scheme. I know, I did wrong. I did wrong. But I also know you want this job. And you are the right man for it. What's done is done. Are you going to let me finish my career without infamy? I'll let you make your own decision about that. Sonny Jim. So Chadwick Vaughn is in jail? Yes, and no amount of favors will help him this time. We have compelling evidence that he murdered Richard Tauber, as well as the Haynes sisters back in 1891, and he's admitted to the attempt on Danielle Baker. Well, I'm glad he's finally been brought to justice. As am I. I'm only sorry that the Women's College Hospital won't be receiving his donation. Oh, Miss Vaughn wasn't the only donor that I charmed at that luncheon. In fact, I'm going to pick up another check right now. 
Oh, so the hospital will be getting those electrocardiograph machines after all? Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like someone's receiving good news. I suppose the inspector's received his promotion. Oh, what does that mean for you? I have no idea. I'll see you at home. Sir, we're off to the fair to celebrate the inspector's promotion. Rumor is Higgins is buying. What was that? What was that? Who said I was buying? Congratulations. Thank you. I understand Chief Constable Stewart is stepping down to face charges. He did the right thing. You know, Murdoch, I've been inspector here for, oh, 20 years, give or take a couple of months. Yes. And now, I'm the big boss. <laughs> but I only accept it on one condition, that you replace me. Oh. I did not expect that, sir. Especially given that I am a Catholic at all. Well, they've accepted you for now, but that could change at any moment. I'll do my best to show them that you've made the right decision. No need, Murdoch. I know I've made the right choice. I expect the boys will want to buy you a drink. Just give me five minutes. I'll be along shortly. Of course. Thank you.